Okay, YouTubers and space detectives, this is Joe from Art Alien TV. Now today, I've got a whole bunch of stuff for you to look at. I've got a bunch of new gigapans that I've done from the Perseverance Rover, and I'm going to show you them straight away, and I'm going to show you some of the things I've found straight away, and then I'm going to show you some of this stuff in 3D. Now what I've done is I've got a couple of the gigapans. I've got the left and the right version of the gigapans, and you can flick between them to compare the shapes of the objects and look round them slightly. You can kind of see around them, okay? Which is really cool. Um, but first of all, I'm going to show you this one there. This is one that I did the other day. Uh, I put this up on um, Mars Magazine, actually. And this is the latest kind of selfie from the Perseverance rover. Looks almost identical to the Curiosity rover, actually. Um, it's got a few different things on it, but basically it's the same design. The wheels are different. And we've got a nice shot here of uh, Ingenuity, which is the copter drone, which will be taking off, apparently, tomorrow, uh, at some point tomorrow afternoon. So we should get some images back of this tomorrow evening or later on tomorrow night, perhaps. Um, but there's a good shot of it here. You can see the, uh, the solar panel on top here, which already looks quite dirty. Um, it's got a lot of dirt on it already. So <laughs> that's not great because basically that means that it'll be, it won't be running at 100% uh, efficiency, this solar panel. But uh, I expect they factored that into it. In other words, they would have designed it to work on not full power, probably. Okay, So there we are. So it's, it's all ready to go. And there it is. There's the tracks from the rover. The rover's obviously been up and down a couple of times here. You can see the tracks going one way and then coming back this way. And this is the LZ, the blast zone. Um, you can see the two lighter patches here, one here and one here, a bit further over. This is where the rockets on the descent stage of the uh, rover blew the sand and dust away from the, the ground. And you can see all this stuff underneath. Okay, We did have some close-ups of this uh, early on. And uh, apart from that, you've got the, 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 the dead pixels in the image, which appear here. Now, this is either dead pixels here or um, a bit of crap on the, on the actual uh, lens cover on the camera. We got this blob, which appears in all the images. There it is again. And obviously, when you make a gigapan, that appears multiple times. You can see it in, all along here. There's, there's loads of them. Now, obviously, when you land something like a, a rover on Mars, that you're going to kick up a lot of crap when, when you come close to the ground, and a lot of stuff gets thrown up. If, if it was just dry dirt, right? it would not stick to the glass. But it's a, it's a nice image, this, and uh, this is completely raw. And you can see already there's a lot of dirt on top of the rover here. This is what would have been kicked up when they landed. So you can see all this dirt and sand and dust here. And it's only been there a month, right? So it's already quite dirty. So this is basically sand and dirt that's, that was kicked up when it landed, and the rockets kicked up all the dirt up into the air and some of it landed back down on the rover, okay? But some of it stuck to the lens, which says to me that some of this dirt under here, over here, which was all kicked up in the air, is not completely dry. It wouldn't stick to it unless it was damp, if you see what I mean. So that proves that the moisture levels are much higher than we're being told. And the fact we have uh, a helicopter on Mars proves what I've been saying for many, many years now, that the level of air density must be much higher than we've been told. We're told by NASA that it's around 1% of Earth's um, air density, right? Now, this would not fly in 1% of air, air density of Earth. It wouldn't. It's been tested on Earth. Now, they could have replicated those conditions inside a chamber, in, in a flight chamber. They could change the air pressure and all that to, to to uh, mimic another planet. I mean, when they test aircraft in, in, the, in Bristol, where I live, um, uh, we've got uh, British Aerospace, and they've got these special chambers where they test stuff, and you can pressurize it and, and change the pressure in there to anything you like uh, to, to simulate high altitude flight and that sort of thing. So they could have done that with this. And this is why helicopters don't fly at high altitude on Earth, because there's not enough air up there. Right? They only, they've got a flight ceiling of about 
I don't know, about 10,000 feet or something, whereas aircraft can go way, way higher than that, and some aircraft go right up, hundreds, uh, up to 100,000 feet plus, some of them. Um, but the air is very, very thin. So how would this fly? How was it going to fly if they're telling us the truth about the air pressure? They must have been lying all along, like I've been saying. You can't see much other stuff in here. There's a few rocks in the foreground, but nothing to write home about. Okay, so there was that one. Then we have these two. Now, these two I worked on last night and today. I've got this one here. This is Sol 48. This is the very latest uh, set of mast cam images. This is mast left, right? And here we have mast right. And these, what I've done is I've lined them up very carefully so you can see the same thing here in 3D. When I flick between them like this, if you concentrate on the center of the image, you can see this thing I found in 3D, right? You just flick between them like that, right? 3D image, basically, that's what you've got. And that's the, that's the good thing about doing left and right gigapans. If you make sure they're the same size. Um, what I did, I enlarged all these uh, pans by times two, which I always do, roughly, unless they're really, really big and, and uh, they won't fit. This is what looks like a reptile. Now, whether this is fossilised or an actual carving of a reptile, I don't think it's a carving. Why would you carve a reptile? There are, there, there are lots of weird carved animals that I've shown, so it's not beyond the realms of imagination that he would have carved it. But I'm beginning to wonder whether a lot of the th these things are actually just strange fossils and, and uh, stuff that's just literally um, crystallised in the the sulfate-rich soil and uh, strange conditions on the surface. Because this looks very much like some kind of dinosaur or reptile, right? And I'm just going to zoom in and show you. Now, you can see, even in the raw clip here, now this is taken from the right image. Let me show you on here. This is MR, so that's right, mast right, okay? That's the right one. And this is the left one. The right one is slightly clearer for some reason. It's just a slightly different angle, and the lighting is slightly better because it's, I think the eyes on the rover are literally inches apart. I'm not sure exactly how many inches. I think it's about six, whereas human eyes, the center of each of our eyes are only about three inches apart. Uh, three and a half, four, you know, something like that, three inches. So you've got quite a wide difference between the two eyes on the camera. They're wider apart than human eyes. They're more like viewfinders on a tank or something like that. What we've got here is a 3D view of a reptile head. Now, whether this is a reptile or, or um, some kind of dinosaur, I'm not sure which, but I have found others, and I'll put some clips of those in in a second for you. Just to prove that this isn't a one-off. I have found many of these, and there are lots of different types. I've found little tiny lizards, I've found large lizard remains, and all types of other creatures as well, including other members of the reptile family, like snakes, uh, remains of or preserved, um, and also all, all other types of creatures, including birds and what look a bit like mammals as well. Uh, things like uh, dogs and bears and cats, and uh, things like that as well, and loads of loads of different types of apes and, and things like that. So there are all types of animals here. And once you accept that fact, then you will see that there are either depictions of them or remains of them all over the place. So I'm just going to show you in here and outline that for you. There's the raw clip from, this is the mast right version, uh, but they're both good. The mast right is slightly clearer because it's just a slightly better angle. And you can see, even in a raw image, you can see an eye there, just here. And another one here. Not much detail in that one. You can even see eye, iris detail there. If I zoom in, there it is, look. And you've got teeth. Not very clear, but you've got teeth. Jagged, reptilian or dinosaur-like, jagged, pointed teeth, okay? Now, remember when I said um, in a previous video, I showed that uh, ape 
or a proto-human type skull, which looks fossilised, with the top of the head bitten off. It's got the head, it's got these big teeth marks in the head like this. And the top of the head is kind of bitten off and it's got these big lines and teeth gouges in it, right? I'll show you that in a minute. Now, could it have been one of these? Now this one, I'm not sure how big it is. I'm not sure it's big enough to bite the top of that dude's head off, right? But there may have been larger ones. This may be one of the smaller ones, okay? And as I showed you a second ago, there are other large reptoids and reptiles that I found. Uh, and even humanoids that had very large teeth and very large jaws and very large heads, big enough to bite the top of someone's head off. This is the snout, obviously. You've got what look like nostrils here. You've got two dark areas here, one here and one here. So the snout comes down. And we have quite a clear te tooth there, large, pointed, jagged teeth. Not a huge amount of detail, but that's what we're looking at. And it has a sort of a brow ridge there, and another one here. And then you can see the eye there. And you've got this head that comes up. Some sort of weird detail here. Don't know what that represents. Okay. There's the back of it there and then the bottom there. That's what we have. Very strange. It's not like quite anything like anything I've seen before. It's similar in some ways to some of the ones I've shown before, but not the same. We had one similar to crocodiles or, or alligators. Um, this is in Gale Crater, okay? This is a different area, but it's very similar to Gale Crater and was a lake bed stroke seabed at one point, okay? So we would see similar stuff here. So that was really interesting. Um, let's take that off and see if we can see anything else in there. Now, I'm, I'm up quite close here, but sometimes it helps if you look at these things on the actual Gigapan page like this, you can actually flick between them. This is slightly clearer, the right one. So let's look at that with the magnifier. There it is. All right, there's the snout. And you can see that tooth coming down there. There's another one there and there. But they're interlocking teeth, like you would get on an alligator or a crocodile or something like that, where they sort of overlap each other. All right, there's the eye. There's the other one, which is just a shadow, but it's got a kind of point to the head. It's similar in shape to some of the bird skulls that I found, um, which have got this kind of, almost a point to them, right? Now, there are a few other things I found. Now, I'm just gonna show you those quickly now. Now, some of these are too vague and too far away. I don't really understand exactly what some of them are, but I'm gonna show you them anyway. And uh, there was this thing here, which I thought was interesting, that's a bit like a, a skull or, or something, or perhaps a carving of, a, of an animal here. This is the mouth and the eyes here. This is the cheek and, and jawbone. This is a jawbone coming around here, see that? It's there. I'll show you that in a minute. I've got clips of these. There's a strange box-like thing here, which is interesting. Now, we did see this in some of the other images, okay? Now we've got a bit of a closer view of it. We've got a box-shaped object here with some strange parts to it. Now, this may be part of a structure. That's what it looks like to me, where we have different stone pieces or stonework that's been quarried, cut, shaped, and basically stuck together. That's what it looks like, but I could be wrong. But this is a box shape. We've got a box shape to it, okay? Interesting. So there was that. Nothing amazing about that. There's this um, reptoid, or whatever he is, here. Reptile. This here. So that's near, sort of centre right of the image. Then we have this thing, which I've showed in previous videos. I've shown this from different angles. And I'm going to show you another angle on some of these things in a minute. Uh, there's this weird sort of pyramid stone thing, which I showed in my previous video. We've got a better uh, view of it here. Just here. Now, it doesn't look that much, but I still think this is artificial. It's got an almost perfectly symmetrical curve either side, and we have what look like 
pieces of block work inside it here. Okay, I'll show you a clip of that in a minute. And you can see all this on the raw version. Now, both these uh, gigapans, this is the right one, and the left one here is slightly bigger. It's got a slightly wider view, and we can see more stuff over this end. But they both got the raw version at the top and the enhanced version at the bottom. So you can actually see, well, I've only done a very, very basic color enhancement of this and color corrected it by using fade correction and then, or, or color correction, if you want to call it that, um, and then a bit of contrast, that's it, okay? That's all they've done. So there's not a lot of difference between the raw and the enhanced, apart from the actual color and the definition. This has got better definition because it's slightly got more contrast to it and a, a little bit clearer, okay? There's that thing, the pyramid sort of rock thing here. This has been enhanced a bit more, I've brightened it a bit more. Some interesting details on here. I'm not really quite sure what I'm looking at, but this is what I'm seeing. Very strange. I don't know what it represents exactly. It's a little bit more complex than it looks in the original raw image. We've got these parts coming across here and these rectangular sort of sections on here. Right, this here. Interesting, sort of rounded part there. We've got some interesting details here, and there it is. Very strange. I don't really know what it is, but it looks manufactured to me. It looks like a, uh, an object that's been made, and we're seeing it's kind of eroded away, and we're seeing some of the internal structure by the looks of it, like it was made of stone and part of a structure or placed on a structure or part of a, uh, a, a sort of statue. There's lots and lots of fragments in this area and a lot of them I think are architectural fragments, in other words, parts of buildings. And as I've said and shown many times before, a lot of these buildings had statues in front of them and on top of them, okay, and around them. Uh, and I think that's why we find so many weird animal. A lot of these weird animals we're finding are actually fragments of, 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 uh, of architecture and uh, sort of um, decorations that were on some of these structures which have survived in pieces and a lot of them are broken but some of them are still in fairly good shape. Um, this looks like part of, of something like that, as does this maybe. But this was weird because we got uh, a skull-shaped object, but I'm not sure it is. I'm just saying it's, it's skull-shaped. Let's get that in the center, there we are. And we got like a jaw here. But it's got this weird detail here. And what looks a bit like an eye there, but I don't know, I don't know if it is. But we also have what kind of bit, look a bit like teeth here. Very strange, I, I'm not sure what to make of this one at all. Perhaps some of you can see it a bit differently to me. I'm not really sure I'm getting this at all really. Um, but we do have these details in here, very strange. Very strange. Uh, this looks like some kind of carving to me. Uh, let's get rid of that stuff on there. Let's go a bit darker with it because if you darken the contrast more then the shapes come out better. So let's go in dark and make it quite dark and pull out some of those shadows a bit more. Now you can really see these shapes here. Seems to be an eye there. And this looks like a, a jaw coming round. And perhaps some teeth in here, some weird details here. Very strange. Uh, whether that's a fossil or a carving, I don't know. It may just be a random rock that's, that's kind of eroded in a funny way, but it's funny how these things tend to have teeth and eyes and everything else. There we are. So who knows about that? I don't know. That's a bit of a weird one. Not really sure what to make of it, really. Uh, there is also this. This looks like a, a really interesting, this one. This is what I'm calling the hand, right? And I'm going to show you. I'll show you on the actual pan here. I've got it marked. They're, all, they're marked on both pans, so you can look at both of them. And I've marked the same things. Let's look at the right one here first. Now the hand is over here on the left. Just here. There it is. We've got this weird rock with what this hand coming out with fingers on it. One, two and three. And perhaps even a thumb there. Now I'm not saying it is necessarily a hand, I'm just calling it a hand, okay? 
are they actually part of fragments of architecture or of actual art that was on the architecture? That's the point. And I think the latter with a lot of this stuff. You have interesting details here. We've got these fingers, three fingers there. And it comes around like that. And a possible thumb just here. And a hand shape that's joined onto this kind of weird rock here. Now that to me doesn't look like just some kind of random rock. There's very specific detail on here and confirms what I suspect is that a lot of these things are, are statue fragments that were on buildings or in front of buildings, okay? Or even behind buildings, all right? But generally they're either in front or on top, often at the entrance of a building, okay? Like we have on Earth, that's what they had on Mars as well. And they have gargoyles along the top of some of the buildings and they have gargoyles in front of them. They have animals like cats and things either side of the entrance like we often have. So this is a, an architectural style that we've had going right back to classical times on, on, on Earth. Ancient Greeks and ancient uh, Egyptians and, and, and even further and beyond. Uh, ancient Babylon even. So things like sphinxes and cats and animals and gods and goddesses carved and uh, either in front of your house or in your house or on top of your house or on government buildings and on religious buildings, that kind of thing. Statues, okay? They're there to show status. Only people with status can afford them and only important people have really large portraits done of them like I've shown in Gale Crater where we have massive statues of emperors and kings and gods perhaps and goddesses okay so they they seem to have had a similar kind of style to us and i'm pretty sure that this this thing here is also probably a very eroded part of some kind of carved head or something we got these parts to it and what looks like an ear just to here but it's so eroded and pitted that uh, it's almost impossible to say exactly, but there's there's some sort of detail there. Uh, there's no sort of eye detail on here. It's so eroded away. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. And we've got another one here. Now this one is, is looking upwards here. So we've got what looks like a jaw here or mouth and the face here, okay? And we've got an eye here and an eye here, but it's, there's a nose. Uh, there's almost some teeth detail in there, but it's very eroded and soft, okay? It's rounded off and softened by erosion, and also these slightly out of focus images, okay? So that looks like one's looking up, and there's another one behind it here. Uh, also broken and eroded. Eye here, eye here, nose and mouth. Cheekbone, chin, top of the head's broken off, would have come up like this, I would imagine. Or if it's like any of the others, it would have had a large head or hat or helmet or something like this is here, right? This is what I'm seeing. And uh, this this is uh, architectural artwork. In other words, artwork that would have been attached to either a tomb or a building or a house or whatever, on a wall or something, entrance. There's that, uh, that box-shaped thing. Now, this may turn out to be nothing, but I just thought the shape of it didn't look natural because it has this almost perfect box shape to it with these parts here that have been joined together. So there we are. Um, that looks manufactured to me, but I could be wrong. Uh, when we see other angles of these things, we may find they're not. Um, but... Often, the other angles f show that they are. <laughs> and there's this tiny little thing. Now, I'm calling this Woodstock. Because it reminds me of the little bird uh, on Peanuts cartoon. And I'm sure some of you older folk like me will remember that, okay? Which was, I loved that show when I was a kid. Uh, they showed it in the UK here as well, you know. Um, there it is. But this is tiny, right? So I'm not going to go crazy with this one. Let's have a look at it on here. I've got it marked, it's over here to the right. 
There it is. This is really small. This is only about an inch or two in size. It's quite a long way off. So it's probably bigger than that, actually. It's probably a few inches, I would say, at least. But it's just a long way off. And with the magnifier, you can see that quite clearly. We've got a little skull type thing with a mouth here, two eyes, two bulbous eyes, and what looks like a mohawk, like a little bird or something. I'm not saying it's bird, don't know what it is. There's not enough detail to tell either way, really. And I'm sure a lot of these other rocks are skulls and things and broken bits of statues and structures and architecture. But there, some of them are so badly broken, it's hard to say. But I've only just started looking at this stuff in this uh, pan. And I'm sure a lot of you will find stuff on here. So if you find anything, mark it on here and I'll check it out. So there it is. And you can see that with the magnifier. It's not very large and it's quite a long way off. So very little detail. There it is, there's my enhancement. You can see when you enhance it and sharpen it a bit, I very carefully sharpened it. And you can see these kind of little spiky bits on top of the head there. If it is a head, it may not be. Now this may be a skull, it may be part of a carving, who knows, like a figurine or something. And we've got an eyebrow there and an eyebrow there, almost a nose there, and then we have a mouth here. Okay, but if I take that off, you can see it. Once you've seen it, you've seen it. Often the devil is in the detail with these images, and I know a lot of them are, are quite out of focus and a bit grungy, some of these images. These aren't too bad. Uh, they're not great. Um, the, the point is, even in quite low-res images and slightly out of focus images, you can tell the shapes and shadows and form, and especially when you enhance them a little bit. You can see what these things are. You don't necessarily know what they are. You can see that there's something interesting and something worth investigating. Doesn't mean you know whether it's a bird or a reptile or, or whatever necessarily, but you can only guess with some of these things what it might be. And pay attention to this thing here, which is the thing I called the rabbit. Now, I did this in a previous uh, Gigapan video uh, about two or three weeks ago. One of the earlier Gigapans I did, I showed this here. Now, let's have a look at it. Here it is. This is Sol 22. So this was about two weeks ago I did this. And I did a video on this and I said that I thought this was something interesting. Right, this thing here. This is the reptoid that I just showed you from a different, a totally different angle. Right? Doesn't look much, does it? But I thought then, I thought there was something weird about this. And also showed this in that video which I called the rabbit. You can see what looks like a head, with an ear, and a body here. And you can actually see there's an eye just there, even in the raw image, and a nose. This is the nose area here, All right? Now we can see it in this one, from almost from the front. Let's go down to the enhanced one down here. Here it is. There's that thing I, uh, I'm calling the reptoid. And here's the thing I called the rabbit. I'm not saying it is a rabbit, I'm just saying it's shaped like one. But you can see there's another eye on the other side there, one there. This is the one we've already seen. And it's got nostrils here, one there and one there. There's the ear going back, that's the head, and that's the sort of body underneath. So we're seeing this almost from the front here. So we've got the 3D version of that there. There's the rabbit, there's the reptoid. And here is the rabbit from the side and the reptoid from the side, from further around to the left, okay? because the rover's moved and obviously we've seen it now from another angle. So we can verify that some of these things still look like what I said they did, even from a, a different angle. So thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.